Welcome back Achievement Hunters to Dyson Sphere Program. Today we're going to wrap up with a nice 99% completion rate, leaving the speedrun for the last video. Most of the achievements on today's list require you to do one thing, take your time. This video will be pretty simple because I basically cut out 70 hours of gameplay and an additional 20 hours of waiting for the final achievements on today's list. Let's get started. First on the list is the third and final type of planet we have to land on, a planet with a horizontal axis. This next achievement comes a lot sooner if your receivers are all using graviton lenses. As we scale up the size and quantities of our Dyson Spheres, we'll eventually have 100 ray receivers, all with at least 85% efficiency from continuous receiving. The last research achievement asks you to research everything. This includes doing all the infinity researches that cost universe matrices at least once. As of the last patch, this achievement also requires you to research the new logistics technology they added, even the stacking one that costs 24,000. Believe it or not, the cover at least 12 veins with one mining machine achievement feels like it could be the hardest, or at least the most tedious. You cannot use the new advanced mining machine for this task. It has to be the classic mining machine that you started with. What you need to do is keep an eye out for densely packed mineral veins. If you see what looks like three long rows of veins, you might be in luck. Hover over the veins using a mining machine and look for a spot where 12 veins are all highlighted, even if the miner has a collision error. For example, this titanium patch isn't too bad, but the best I can do is get 11 veins out of it. This copper patch also looks very promising. If I aim it just right, it looks like I could get all 12 out of this. However, even after hiding the veins that were in my way and spending 20 minutes trying, I decided to move on. I continued my journey, keeping an eye out for good mineral veins, and found this iron vein. Like before, I had to hide some of the veins to get it to work. And as you can see, my miner, when placed down, will tap 12 veins in total. Good luck everyone, this is a tricky one. With a stable production of antimatter fuel and a supply of artificial stars, this one asks you for something very specific. You need four active artificial stars in total. The first one needs to be placed exactly at the north pole of your starting planet. Remember to feed it with enough antimatter fuel so it won't turn off while you're working on this. Secondly, you need to place another star at the south pole of your starting planet. The third one needs to be placed on an ice field gelosol planet. As a tip to make sure you're placing them right, watch the progress meter on this achievement. It goes up by one if it's working. You don't have to place this star at the poles. Anywhere on the planet will work. As you can see, it now says 3 out of 4. The last one needs to be placed on the dark side of a tidal locked planet. Since it's the last one, you don't need a large supply of fuel for it. Just drop one in manually. One more tip. These stars won't count unless they're connected to something demanding energy. Next on our list, travel to 32 systems. You don't have to land on any planets for this to trigger. Once you drop out of warp inside of a system and are within 2 AU of any celestial body, it will count towards your goal. You can also take this opportunity to see whether certain systems are worth colonizing or not.
Before I dive deep into research, I set up a decently sized production of solar sails and rockets first, since it's the slowest thing to produce, and I'm definitely going to need more power soon. For mass solar sail production, I actually do not use fire ice. The reason I make my graphene out of sulfur and energetic graphite is that I won't have to deal with the hydrogen byproduct. In a previous game, I played with a large community of players and hit the top of the leaderboards with an 8 terawatt Dyson Sphere. You can see a clip of me flying through it on my channel. To fill out that sphere, I had to make millions of solar sails, and with that came millions of excess hydrogen. I even had to make a large blueprint whose job it was to store all that hydrogen, which I would have to devastate constantly. For small carrier rocket production, I decided to make a brand new, super large blueprint. It's entirely self-contained, takes up a quarter of the planet's equator area, and produces a total of 2.5 small carrier rockets per second. The only thing this blueprint requires is a source of raw ingredients, warpers, and 1 to 2 gigawatts of power. With our massive Dyson Sphere projects underway, let's work on research. We begin with electromagnetic matrices. These have always been simple. You add a little bit of iron and copper, some Mark III proliferators, and it won't take long to hit the goal of 12 per second, especially when this factory I created outputs 75 per second. This entire factory fits in a rather small section of the planet, so it's barely complex at all. Let's have a quick intermission before we continue. One joule is referred to as one watt per second. When you first see the requirement to consume one petajoule, which is a million million joules, you might think it's impossible. But if you do the math, it's really not all that bad. If your factories, like mine right now, are consuming 20 gigawatts, you get this achievement in about 14 hours. I've only just started building massive factories for research, so as long as you're building towards the end game, you'll get this one eventually. I like to keep my energy matrix builds just as simple as the last one. A bit of coal and an unlimited supply of hydrogen from a nearby gas giant will be used for this. This new science production is about the same size as what I had for electromagnetic matrices. While the build itself is simple, the number of labs required has now doubled. In this playthrough, coal was surprisingly hard to come by in my galaxy. We're going to use some kimberlite ore to make the diamonds, and plenty of organic crystals and titanium to make the titanium crystals in order to produce our structure matrices. Now things are starting to get a little complicated. Unlike the previous three, information matrices take three times the space to only produce half the amount. The main ingredients we want to use for this one include oil for plastic and spiniform in order to make the carbon nanotubes. The 50 gigawatt power achievement is interesting. Even though I'm already producing hundreds of gigawatts of power with my Dyson Spheres, they don't count unless something is using it. As we see here, after putting down a few more ray receivers, I hit the 50 gigawatt capacity it wanted. You'll get this achievement as you build up especially when you scale up production of information and gravity matrices. The gravity matrix is also quite complex, but honestly they take about the same amount of space as information matrices do. The optimal recipe to build everything it needs will require tons of deuterium, optical grading crystals, and fire ice. This build, however, takes significantly more power than the others since I'm running several hundred particle colliders at once in order to produce both strange matter and to convert hydrogen into deuterium. In order to produce 37.5 matrices per second, which is only half of what I need, it took approximately 5 gigawatts of power. Now we're finally putting together the last piece of this puzzle. All we need to do now is to fetch critical photons from a powerful enough Dyson Sphere, convert those into dark matter, then put it all together. Proliferation is one of the newest features added to Dyson Sphere program, and is insanely powerful at this step. 
With vanilla recipes, my builds would have only produced 60 per second. By proliferating each science, they produced 75 per second. When I proliferate the production of universe matrices, I get an output of 93.75 per second. Then finally, I proliferate one last time to get another bonus of 25% for the research hash rate. Proliferating these four steps has basically doubled our research output. There are six achievements from producing massive amounts of universe matrices. We're going to get the first three right now. We start with six per second. Then another when we're producing 12 per second. Then finally, when we have achieved an average of 30 per second. At the rate I'm going, it won't take too long before I get the achievement for uploading 1 million universe matrices. You can keep track of this number either by keeping track of the total consumed universe matrices in your entire star cluster, or at the bottom of the technology statistics page. The next one sounds tricky, but all they're really asking you to do is to buffer a lot of universe matrices and use them up all at once. They want you to get an upload rate of 1 million hashes per second. A single lab with a proliferated universe matrix will produce 375 hashes per second if you have level 5 research speed. To get to 1 million, we need about 2,700 labs in order to do this. That said, this achievement isn't totally accurate. What they really want is an average of 1 million per second over a whole minute. The best place to track whether or not you're hitting this achievement is by looking at the research tab in the statistics panel and only looking at 1 minute increments. When the number on the left hand side there reaches 1 million hashes per second, you'll unlock the next achievement. At this point, Getting the next three achievements just involves letting the game run for a very long time. For me, this took about 20 hours. I could add more research, and I did in fact add an additional production of about 30 more universe matrices per second, but I'm sure you've noticed sometimes there's a little frame rate counter on the top left of my screen. At a certain point, if you keep adding more factories, your game will suffer and start to slow down. In my case, I just let the game run while I was at work. This first achievement comes once you've unlocked Veins Utilization Level 31, where your mining consumption rate goes under 15%. You can generate a lot of power if you build your Dyson Spheres around stars with high luminosity. After starting on my ninth Dyson Sphere, I eventually reached a total production of 1 terawatt of Dyson Sphere power. Twenty AFK hours later, I finally reached the last goal of uploading 10 million universe matrices. Keep in mind that this achievement is looking at matrices uploaded and not hash rates, meaning that proliferating universe matrices themselves aren't going to help you on this step. Like I said before, you can keep track of this number at the bottom of the technology statistics page right here. Before we get the 99th achievement, I have a confession to make. When I started making all my Dyson Spheres in this playthrough, I ran into a little problem. Notice anything missing on my star map? It doesn't have any red giants. It's got blue giants, but no red ones. This last achievement requires it. It wouldn't take too long to start a new game to get this one, but I kind of decided to just load up an old save of mine to finish this one off. I still had to build the sphere though, which requires you to launch over 300,000 solar sails within two hours. Just learn from my mistake and keep this in mind. If you're doing an achievement run like this, check your star map at the beginning for a red giant before starting the game. With everything now complete, we only have one more achievement left to go. We managed to do a lot in this playthrough. 
We explored the galaxy, discovered new resources, built massive Dyson spheres, and produced lots of research for Center Brain. We've just got one challenge left before we've got our 100% completion rate, and it's going to be a tough one. Complete the game in under 10 hours. I hope you're looking forward to it. I'll see you next time.